hey guys it's Saka cindy welcome back again to another video if you are new here hi my name is cindy thank you so much for clicking to watch this video i just want us to see this video right here now this is a radio um i think a radio station okay and um this caller called because you know they were having this conversation about immigrants it says it's migrants die while attempting to cross english channel as 10 month old baby left in critical condition people were calling in to give their opinion because people were you know um coming into the country illegally now this is what this caller said that left everyone in shock including the host or the presenter check this video out you are saying you we would watch them drown initially yeah because then it would stop Let, let's further. just clarify you, you would watch men women and children drown in front of you they're trying to get into the country illegally just, just answer the, the question if you would sir yes or no yes i i don't see how we can have any conversation simon where is your humanity sir my humanity is with this country you watch a child drown in front of you it's the parents that have um, forced this upon the child. It's not the child's fault as he goes under for the third and final time, is it? No, but it's also not our fault that they're coming over illegally. How many children? At what? How many children would have to drown before you think this policy isn't working? Ten? Well, the policy it, w it would start. It would start to work because tw then the migrants wouldn't get on the boat. Let's say it's twenty-five drowned children. Would that be worth it, Simon? My opinion, yes. Oh my God. <laughs> now from the accent, that man, Simon, is clearly a British man. And then people are saying in the comment, find Simon. And some people were like, y'all need to check his family out. Where is your human? Oh my gosh. This is absolutely heartbreaking. Like, where is your humanity, sir? Where is your, I can't, I can't, I can't believe this. Now, if you check the comment section of that video, now I just wanna show you just this comment here. This person says a caring and respectful parent would never put their child in such a dangerous situation in the first place. I know I wouldn't. The second person says, finally, a caller with some sense and brutal honesty to tell the truth of what the majority of people think. And then someone replied and said, they don't speak for me or many of us. Jeez. Honestly, I can't, I can't explain the way I'm feeling right now. <laughs> Anyways, I have put together a few stitches. Let's just hear what people said about this video. And I'm going to show you some other comments I grabbed from the comment section of that video. So you guys can read what people are saying. Some people are actually supporting what the caller said. We are losing it. Mm -mm. Check the stitches out. You're saying you we would watch them drown initially yeah you see the cruelty is baked in the cruelty is part of the package it's not an outlier the cruelty is part of the package you understand that right these immigration conversations, whether it's in America, UK, wherever, right? These people seem to believe that they don't want any immigrants whatsoever. Now, some of these countries where people will say shit like that can't stay out of other people's countries. They can't. They would be calling for the UN to step in if a country that they've gone into kicked them out, said things like this about them. But they don't mind saying it about people they think are invading. Of course they let them drown, shoot them in the Rio Grande. 
buoys with barbed wire around them. It's part of the package. It is part of the package. They're just now emboldened to say it. They are now emboldened to say these things out loud. It's not shocking. They've always felt that way. They have always felt that way. Cruelty is part of the package. It is. These same people will say, don't judge us by the worst of us. But they have no problem doing that. At all. They have no problem whatsoever doing that. They can foister upon immigrants or migrants any stereotype that they want. Because the stereotype justifies their feelings towards them. It does. If you see somebody as subhuman, then you're willing to unalive them yourself or watch them be unalived. And you get glee from it. I say man is a cancer for a reason. Because man's inability to see humanity in other people that do not look like them, do not sound like them, do not speak the language that they speak. It's an ingrained trait. It always has been. We, humanity, are horrible. We always have been. Cruelty is part of the package. It's part of the package. You can colonize a country where people are already on it and refer to the people who were there in the first place as savages because cruelty is part of the package. Why do you think they cling so hard to their religion and their faith and things of that nature? Because anything, they will use anything to justify their cruelty. They will. Straight up. And they sleep well at night. Appealing to people's humanity in this day and time is useless. It's a futile effort and you should just stop doing it. Because these people do not see humanity. They don't. They see subhuman savages. And it doesn't matter whether or not the accent that these things come out of is British or Texan, it doesn't matter. It genuinely doesn't. They will foister stereotypes upon people who are just trying to either flee a situation that these countries created or find a better life, just simply just finding a better life. They will foister those stereotypes on them because it helps them to hate them even more. And if you can hate them, you don't care if they die. Who gives a shit? And then these people will sit in a pew on Sunday and they will talk to their God. They will say, they will profess that they are followers of Christ or whatever. And then Monday morning, they will go back to the same thing they were doing before, which is wishing death on people who are fleeing something or who just want to have a better life, not your life, just a better life. Because cruelty is part of the package. It goes deeper than just immigration policy. It's an actual hatred. And people love to bring up uh, the funny mustache man and things of that nature in times like this. I think it's a little bit off. Because the funny mustache man is just the physical manifestation of that cruelty. He's not the first and he won't be the last. He might be the most visible, yes, but there was King Leopold before him and there was a monster before him as well. They've always existed. And with their existence comes getting people riled up against the other, no matter what that other is. And if you can other it, you can make it subhuman. You can call it a savage. You can call it vermin. You can say that it is poisoning the blood of your country. 
and then the cruelty steps in. Look at what we did in the war on terror. Every Muslim had to pay for the actions of extremists. And how do we justify it? Oh, they don't believe in our God. Hmm. It's, it's a tale as old as time. It's not like it hasn't happened before. What the hell do you think the Crusades were? We, and I mean the humanity, we have are great practitioners of cruelty. We are. It gets some people's blood pumping to be able to other people who don't look like them or sound like them or talk like them or act like them. And once again, if you can other it, you can make it subhuman. If you can make it subhuman, then cruelty will just come right along with it. And it's a justification in every single instance because cruelty is part of the package. This man simply said what a lot of people here in America think. And if you ask them, some of them will even tell you. There are people that have been stockpiling weapons for an eventual race war simply because they want one. The idea of peace, of acceptance, that doesn't get your blood pumping the way hating and wishing death does. This man literally said, initially, yeah, I'd watch him drown, including a baby, because it's not a baby that looks like him. It's not a baby that sounds like him. The parents of that baby might not even worship the God that he does. So therefore, they're subhuman. Why not watch them drown? Humanity is cruel at its heart. Cruelty is part of the package. We other people. And then we have other people that try to tell us, well, we shouldn't do that. It's too late. It's what we've always done. It is a justification for their racism, their xenophobia, their homophobia, their Islamophobia, their anti-Semitism. It is all a justification because the cruelty is what they want. They want that death. They want to know that these people died to try to get just a better life. And then they will go on drinking their tea or coffee or going to their jobs and driving cars and loving people, looking at their children like real human beings, but not the baby that's in critical condition because the baby is part of the people he doesn't like. And of course, why not watch that child drown? Cruelty is part of the package. Why are people surprised by that? Five drowned children. Would that be worth it, Simon? My opinion, yes. Check the stitch, check out LBC if you want, but... I don't go my bundle on um, old Nick Ferrari anyway, but at least he's acting with a bit of compassion and understanding, so we'll, we'll give him that one. But to Simon the Caller, you would sit and watch people drown. Well, let me break something to you, pumpkin. Both the RNLI and the people of Dover, Great Stone, Dim Church, Dungeness, Little Stone, Folkestone, St Margaret's and all the other places where these boats end up don't care what you think because they will carry on rescuing people in trouble at sea because that's what they've done for millennia especially Dovorians you have the audacity to tell the people of Dover no, let them drown I'm telling you now <laughs> if my name was still alive being a... um person who spent a large amount of her life in the Dover area and in the town and being one of those women and my grandfather who was born and bred just outside Dover um, and those that came before his parents, his grandparents and they wouldn't have done that 
and the people now in Dover don't do that because they still care about people in trouble at sea because so many of them have jobs at sea or family members who have jobs at sea. You go back to the Herald of Free Enterprise sinking. Dover lost a lot of people. And events like that stick in your mind um, that people can easily die at sea. On that note, they happily rescue them. So, you are suggesting people throw aside millennia of compassion and understanding for these things to go, yeah, let them die. That's only this far off saying, let me eat cake. You know that, right? It's, it's just as blind, stupid, selfish and thoughtless. You are the epitome of white supremacy, sir. And whilst not all those people that are coming on boats are brown or black, most often they are. So your white supremacy is showing. Well done, Si. Yeah, point number one, you're a dick. And on top of that, I've grown up by the sea. Right, so I am used to the sea. And I did a skipper's exam when I was 13. And I know how to read charts. Right, so as somebody who can chart a course, I know how bloody expert you've got to be to chart a course across the Straits of Dover. Because they're the busiest shipping lanes in the world. And most of what's in that water is enormous. A rubber dinghy, not quite so enormous. And I've, as I have explained on other accounts that I don't know, have anymore, um, if you're in a ferry, a cruise liner or a large cargo ship, you can't see a small dinghy. You can't see it. It's tiny and you are enormous. And as for height, um, the cruise ships have got no chance of seeing them. And just remember, the wake of a ship can draw you towards that ship. Yeah, you might think the waves going that way will push you. But they don't. It sucks you towards it. And once you get to the stern of said ship, you are in great risk of being sucked under and um, propelled to death. So those that get across, get across more by luck than judgment, because the people skippering these dinghies do not have an innate knowledge of those shipping lanes, of the sandbanks, of riptides and eddies, and all the things that can fuck you up. Now, I've sailed it in a 17-foot sailing ship. Boat. It's a boat. Um, a yacht, let's say. <laughs> yeah, um, a tiny little 17-foot thing. And it's fun. Don't get me wrong. It's enormous fun. If you know those waters, if you understand the signs of the sea and the sky and the weather, if you understand how those things work, how moving tides can cause huge edges, never mind the edges caused by large ships. It is dodgy as fuck. These people are not doing that because we want a nice day out on the... No, you have to be fucking desperate to get in a poorly inflated, poorly maintained dinghy and go across the 21 miles to Dover or the 27 to, I don't know, Dimchurch or the 25 and a bit to Folkestone. You have got to be out of your mind desperate to attempt that. And as for them being illegal, if the previous government had not removed most safe routes, which they did illegally, there would be no need for illegal migration. Blame the Tories for that. And I often get a lot of people kind of say, they haven't got any documentation. Well, not all Brits have got a passport. What if we had a sudden really dangerous thing happen and we had to escape over the over the channel. Do you think people are going to have time to get a passport? What's well, good for the goose and all that? Not everyone has a passport. Not everyone's expecting to have their life turned upside down, their family members murdered or blown up or whatever way you want to look at it. That's not saying you sit around going, oh, I better get a passport in case I have to become an immigrant. 
Also, I have mentioned several times that in, on their journeys across Europe, you'll often find that they'll hand over their documentation and they never get it back again. Poland, looking at you, and a few other countries that go, oh, whoops, don't know, I lost it. So, rather than saying, let them die, which, no, Simon, you wouldn't sit on the beaches of Dover and watch people drown. Even you couldn't. You would be feel compelled to rescue those people if you have an ounce of humanity. I grew up um, training in life-saving because my granddad was the former... He was the progenitor of the RLSS Kent branch in 1960, so I had to do those exams because my granddad was the president. So I grew up learning how to rescue people, how to read charts, how to sail, how to do all the things in water that was necessary to preserve life. And you were the opposite of me, Simon, because instead of learning about how important life is, all you're bothered about is, it be brown, innit? And I'll point something else out to you, Simon. As the boomers are retiring and dying, we do not have the people to fill the roles that they leave behind. The sp Sorry, it sounded like something fell over in the kitchen. It didn't, but, you know, it's now knackered my flow. What I'm trying to say is, that is sick, Simon. You are a sick human being to say you would watch people die now it doesn't matter if they're women children men whatever doesn't matter you've got to be some kind of deranged weirdness to say you'd watch people die and i don't think anybody could actually do that i think you would feel compelled to help so rather than talking shit and trying to make whatever that was a, a point beyond humanity Maybe think that if it were you in the same situations they're in, you would expect to be rescued too. And um, it's only luck of geography and politics that you're not in that position yourself, Simon. So rather than treating humans as if they aren't human, maybe imagine if it was you and your children having to escape somewhere, because I think you'd want help, wouldn't you? So don't expect the people in the seaside towns of Kent to ignore that. They will continue doing what they have done for many, many years. You can't change these people. You can't change humanity to suit your cruel agenda. So I took some screenshots of comments, like I said, from his comment section, so you guys can see what other people said about the video. Please pause to read if you want to. Please, guys, I would love to know your take in the comment, what you have to say about this video. And please feel free to share this video if you can. There are some people that are losing it. Where is your humanity, sir? Again, you are literally going to watch children, children, innocent children drown. And then someone is saying, oh, the parents, they don't love their kids enough. How did, how did we get here? I love what the presenter said. He said to him, we are done having this conversation. He is a white man and Simon doesn't speak for him. Obviously, he is not in support of what Simon said. People said in the comment, find Simon. Anyways, you guys, I thought I should bring this video here. Let me know your take in the comment again. Please share this video if you can. Subscribe, comment, and don't forget to come back for another video. I'm going to see you all in my next one. Y'all stay blessed. Bye.